welcome to read another chapter. The end. <laughs> okay. It's Wait, been a while. I know it's been a while. It's now been we gotta, a while. Now we gotta figure out how to redo our intros. Hello and welcome to... And read another chapter. And we... <laughs> like, what do we have for this? We have a massive... Oops, don't show it. A, a, a massive book wrap up. For you! Wow! So we've already read it. So obviously this is for you. Okay, you, me, you, me, oh, by the way, this is kind of like a wrap up since the last time I did a wrap up, because life, liberty, oh, and the pursuit of happiness, DNF. So, July, I had one DNF, and it was a read aloud I was doing to my sister, and that was Lisa of Wilton Lane. This is a true story of music and survival during World War II, and I was so excited to read this. Katie was excited to read this, and we're reading it, and it was not well written at all. It was very choppy, and this is a 14-year-old girl, but we kept thinking she was, like, 9. And so you're like, you know what? It was really hard for me to read. Well, especially because back then I think they were more mature than now, so if you're thinking yeah. that she's 9 and she's 14, but they would have been a little more mature than they are, especially during hard circumstances given the fact that they are basically thrown into a really bad world. Yeah. It was, it just wasn't that well written. I might try again, just not reading it aloud, but we were really disappointed in this. But that was a D and D and D and F. D and F. I'm just going to grab one. I, I should separate it between stars. Actually, I will separate between stars because this one's actually fresh on my mind and I think it has the lowest star rating of these here. And that is... <laughs> That is Paper Hearts by Courtney Walsh. I believe this, I received this in that $10 Christian book box, which I will leave down below for those videos. And I re if I recall correctly, <clears throat> the only thing I knew about this book is that my mom hated the cover because this takes place in February in Colorado and the background just doesn't fit. <clears throat> it would be cold. And this is like springtime. And living here in Indiana, in February, you don't have green, and you don't walk around in short sleeves. Mm -mm. Um, sleeveless. So that was something that I know really bugged my mom, but that was pretty much all I knew about this book. This book kind of retells um, You've Got Mail, kind of a twist on that. It's very inspired by it. Um, so you have a girl that has a th uh, thrift shop. A book coffee shop that her dad started and so she's kind of holding on to it for nostalgic reasons it's not really what she wants to do um, but she's kind of fighting for it because of that however we have another hero I think, I think, Jacob I think it's Jacob the names also in here were getting me mixed up but I think Jacob is our main hero and he comes in with his daughter and buys the store next to it, next to hers, in order to kind of create this medical clinic. And, of course, we have the whole FOX thing going on here. Because <clears throat> she, had, she had hopes and dreams for that section. So, obviously, you know, sparks are going to happen. Things are going to fly off. Here's why I just did not enjoy this book. First of all, we have a associate working with, I'm going to call him Jacob. I think it's Jacob. We have an associate working with Jacob who is fawning over him, head over heels with him, just going after the guy. And we know that he's lost his wife. I think it's, I think it's pretty obvious that she's dead. Um, but there is a alludement, is that the word? There is kind of this possibility that it might be um, divorced but I think it's pretty obvious it's death and so this this girl whose name is Kelly not Kathleen Kelly um, is going after him but she is kind of the playing the part of a jealous bitter vindictive nasty woman who then makes Abigail's life harder for it with her taunts and her nastiness and everything. It felt 
honestly a lot of this book because of all of that felt like a high school drama like I didn't really think that this woman was acting like an adult way to do this um, knowing somebody that went through somebody with a similar thing it was not done the same way she was more sneaky about it more um, I don't know I, it just felt very high schoolish so there is that whole thing um, then Paper Hearts come in is because he, our main character, our main hero, Jacob, and his wife wrote these um, love notes on Paper Hearts, and then the night before Valentine's they string it up, and then during Valentine's Day they read it all, and then they mail it to this post office, which is this love center, love park, which is like the center for um, everybody to send their Valentine's to to get stamped, um, wedding invitations to get stamped, and all that kind of stuff. My grandma used to live in Knoll, Missouri, which was called Noel, Missouri, um, during the Christmas time, and they actually it had a similar thing. Everybody would send their Christmas cards to, they would get the Noel stamp, and then they would get mailed out. Um, and that's just something that happened. So I could see that happening here with the love. So that's kind of how they start tying in with the whole, you've got mail with their... Uh, messages, emails back and forth. It's kind of like a paper heart twist on that. So there, there's those things that really kind of frustrate me. There's one more thing I'll, I'll mention that frustrated me and that is at the end there is a trigger. I, I'm going to call it a trigger. Um, I just would have liked a heads up on that so at that point I'm calling it a trigger. Um, I don't think this was really like a spoiler to the story in my opinion. But you find out that his wife committed suicide and he couldn't save it. So it, it just, once it all came out, it was just like this, ugh. I don't know, it, it, I, I did not want to deal with that. What really got my goat about this is at one point he's upset with God. He is very upset with God and he is basically kind of having this hash out with the Lord and he's like I'm not gonna forgive you God gives him a word forgive and he's like I'm too angry with you I'm not gonna forgive you blah 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 that wasn't what was making me angry as much as okay you are working through this right will happen in the end right um work it out realize hey wait a minute who who am I to be angry with God who am I to have this hash out with the Lord? Like, I kept expecting that. And I'm just going to start here. Him talking to the Lord. I don't forgive you. Words he felt for months and never spoken escaped without warning. I don't forgive you for destroying my life, for taking her away, for this accident, for making it clear I don't deserve to ever be happy again. I don't forgive any of it. Okay working it out with the Lord working we're working this out with the Lord we're, we're working and then the Lord speaks to him it, it's all the italics no Jacob forgive yourself I showed great restraint I did not throw this book while my husband was driving and could possibly cause an accident wanted to. It just kind of goes downhill from there. I'll be honest, at that point, I want to, I, I skimmed a lot of this. I think you should take it over now. I still need to, like... Okay. Okay, that was a very long book talk. There were already 11 minutes in here. Okay. I had a lot to say about it. Okay. The next book I read was Shark Life by the guy who wrote Jaws. I can't remember at the top of my head. It'll be right here. Yes. I picked this book up from the library to do for the summer reading program. There was a prompt and I needed a book. So I got this one. And it was... It was pretty well written. He was just um, showing or sharing his adventures with different sharks, or him like diving with sharks and whatnot. And there was some evolution in it. 
there was the some things in there that were like okay whatever but otherwise that was, it was pretty good I only gave it three stars because I liked it I didn't really really like it I didn't not one you would read again yeah I wouldn't read it again so I gave it I gave it three stars and yeah, it was okay I won't read it again and then um, since we didn't do Lisa Wilsden Lane for mine and Katie's read aloud we did Felicity Learns a Lesson this is book two of the Felicity series or American Girl American Girl Felicity um, yeah and this is when Felicity goes to learn how to be a lady and she hates it but she makes a new friend so it's kind of the whole thing so I'm going to share Onion, or next, not Onion John, um, and now Miguel by the author that wrote Onion John, which I did not like Onion John. This is another Newbery medal, Onion, Onion John was a Newbery medal. Um, so I kind of had low expectations going into this. Um, it is about a boy becoming a man out in Arizona or New Mexico. one of those areas now I can't remember but basically his family take the sheep up to the mountains every year and it's kind of like um, a, a rite of passage to manhood if you will and Miguel is waiting for his opportunity to do so um, the illustrations were not that impressive they're just very there's something about something like like this I mean daddy long legs and dear enemy but they work, like they work with the thing and there's humor behind it. These really didn't work <laughs> with the story. Um, I think I would have just left them out to be honest. Um, however, I, I, I was more impressed with the actual like sheep information with the story. I actually found, I kept reflecting a lot on Jesus being our shepherd and <clears throat> Not only that, just a lot of taking care of the sheep and sheep culture and these um, these boys that wait for the opportunity to become a man and kind of the opportunities given to them um, in in various ways that they just don't normally see, like responsibility and uh, being um, dependable and things like that. So there's a lot of that in here. Um, but honestly, that story just didn't interest me as much as the information on the sheep. I don't, I don't know. I think this would be really hard to hold kids' attention as a read aloud. I was kind of reflecting on that. I don't know. This might be more maybe 12 and up, which for a middle grade, you kind of almost expect something a little bit younger I don't know I'm not surely sure but it has I have another book marked off on trying to read through all the new berries not sad I read it um, like I said I found a lot of the sheep information fascinating and there's some quotes that I really took from it but as a whole book meh it was okay meh meh go ahead okay I okay so the month of July we were um, we stayed home from going to the vacation we normally go to um, things just came yeah up. things came up and so we were stuck home and some kids got sick and so we were pretty much quarantined for one to two weeks I'm missing a book so keep talking. during that time I read a whole series by Mary Keneally and this series I got from my aunt for, for Christmas and that was the Wild at Heart series and I only had books one and two I only own books one and two and I went to the library to get number three but I had to return it so I don't have it right now um, but <clears throat> okay let me just start with the first one the first one is about the youngest sister of these three sisters there's three sisters and Kylie is the youngest she these three sisters were raised to be men because their father wanted more sons than he wanted daughters, so he kind of raised them to be women. Or men. Sorry. Men. Um, so, 
when they find out that there are men on this mountain, Kylie decides to fall in love with, or not fall in love with him, but stop being a man kind of deal, stop acting and dressing like a man and be more of a woman. So she meets this land agent named Aaron Masterson. Kylie owns her own little homestead, but now someone is trying to take her off that homestead and trying to buy that homestead and Aaron is trying to help her with that because he's a land agent and this whole process they fall in love happily ever after. The second one is about the middle sister Shannon who is kind of a soft heart kind of girl or woman or whatever and so she's very um she's similar to Okay, what I found with this series, it's very similar to the okay, Brides of Hope Mountain. So, like, The Woman of Sunlight, um, Aiming for Love, and the third one. Wild at Heart and The Brides of Hope Mountain were very, very similar. Um, but in a way, they weren't similar. Anyway, um, so Shannon is up in the mountains, and this guy named Tucker is also up in the mountains. And Tucker runs into a bear, and as he's running away from a bear, Shannon saves him. But he ends up getting hurt, and they end up having, they end up spending five days in like this cave while he's healing because he broke his ribs and an ankle or something like that. And so when they get back, there's this minister that lives among these Indians, if that makes sense. And he's like, "You better get married, because that that ain't right that you've lived or were together five days." unmarried yet yeah, you get the whole gist so as a newly married kind of unwanted marry marriage they learn to love each other blah 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 and also people are trying to take her off her homestead okay the third one which I do not have is fire and ice um, I feel like this one was my most favorite she is the one who's more tough more I'm gonna follow my dad and you know be man be the tough kind of woman kind of thing um, so there's this guy who is also trying to get to her homestead but in a way he's saying no wrong way. and he's trying to get her own homestead and she's very like putting her foot down like no you're not gonna take my homestead I've worked hard on this uh 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 Anyway, and then he comes up with a, uh, one day he comes out to her homestead and was like, I need you to marry me, because he told his mother that was out in the whatever state and said he was married, and then she did, the mother decides to come visit him and he's not married, and he's like, will you just marry me so my mother won't stay and be all mother lovey-dovey to me. Anyway. There was that whole fiasco, and she's like, no, I'm not going to do that. And it got to the point where she said yes, and they end up falling in love, and blah, 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 blah. That whole thing. Anyway, I feel like number book three was my favorite because there wasn't so much romance in it. And number two was definitely, book two was definitely more romance. And number book one, I mean, it was okay, but it wasn't my favorite. I would say between book two and book three. I can't quite decide which one is my favorite. So, I read that series. I will definitely be keeping it, the series, and I want to get book three as well. So, when I find it on sale, I will try and grab it. Another Mary Keneally book. I read four Keneally books in the month of July. This one was fired up. This is, this is book two in the... Um, Trouble in Texas series. The first one was swept away. This one's fired up. This one is about a doctor who ends up kind of falling in love with this woman who has two children um, whose husband was abusive to her and her children don't want her to marry another man because they've had such bad experience with their first father that whole thing anyway 
And so there's a bunch of problems that pop up and this guy, the main dude in Fired Up, what's his name? Dare. Dare is trying to show uh, Glenna. So Glenna is the main woman and Dare is the main dude. Dare is trying to show Glenna's son how to be a man and how to, you know, just kind of let go that there will probably be another time when your mother will get married and whatnot. And as he's trying to show this boy a good life, there's problems that come up that people are trying to kill Dare or someone is trying to kill Dare and they're trying to figure that out. And there's a bunch of different things that pop up. There was definitely a lot that happened in this book, but it was really, I really enjoyed it. And this one I will definitely be wanting. Oh, okay. And so yeah, the story kind of behind it, I re already really ex explained, but Glenna also opens up a cafe and she's terrible at cooking, but all the men in town love or have like fallen in love with her. So they still come to the cafe and eat even though it's really disgusting food and it's Glenna and Dare slowly slowly falling in love with each other but they didn't quite fall in love with each other until like the very end of the book which I liked so those were the four books that I read by Mary Keeley and I think those were all the books I read in August or July the books I read in August since my mom is not here the books I read in August the first one was a DNF I was really excited about this book this is the lies of Locke Lamora I was so excited to read this and so I'm at the pool and I'm reading this because it's like the break time and I'm reading it and there's the S word but it made it sound like so the S word can mean like poop or that. So that's why I thought he was talking about because it had that kind of thing, I guess you can say. But then I got, I think it was on page like two or three. It had, anyway, I got to the point where it said the F word and I was like, you know what? Nope. So I was really disappointed in this. I was had high hopes for this. Oh well. And then school started up and the first book I read for school was Animal Farm by George or George Orwell. <laughs> Your favorite. I mean, it wasn't that bad, but it wasn't that great either. I would say it was between a t between a two and a three star. What did you hate? What did you like? Tell me more. It's just it just wasn't that interesting. Like, I didn't get the story. I mean, yeah, I got the story, but I didn't get the story. If that, you didn't get the meaning. You got yeah, what was going I, yeah. on, but you didn't get I what didn't the get, author was trying to. Yeah. I am... It does make reading about... What would this be called as? Dystopian. No, but, like, is it about communism? Yeah. Okay, so... You got it. Okay, so it makes reading about communism a lot easier when it's put in a story form. But I, it's just dumb. So, those were the two books that I have read in August so far. And those were the books that I read in July. So I gave this one four stars. Um, this is loosely based on a real story. So there is a lot of fiction added to this because there's just not a whole lot known. Cynthia Ann Parker was taken by the Comanche warriors and basically as a young girl was brought up as a Native American <laughs> lived within them and then actually even became a chief wife I believe a chief's wife and raised warrior sons and by the time she was rescued from um, the Comanche and brought back to her family she has a daughter what do they call their daughter um to, 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 topsana Tops, to, tosana something like that 
Um, her and her daughter are basically rescued and brought back to live among her pe her own people, her own kind. And it's basically this whole thing is kind of told from a dual perspective. It's told from the journal of her not stepsister. I think it might be her c cousin. No, wait, her niece? Um, yeah, cousin. It, 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 half of it's told as a journal entry from her cousin of, <clears throat> we now basically have this Indian woman, and I'll, I'll use that term. My neighbors next door are Native American, and they refer to themselves as Indian. So, based on that, based on this, this Indian woman who um, pretty much just has to relearn how to live among her own kind, if you will. And this is all of the reflections of the cousin, kind of, is she going to even fit in? She doesn't even want to be here, she's unhappy, so on and so forth. And then it flips to... Um, Cynthia Ann's point of view, which I don't remember what she calls herself. She has a different name among her own people. Anyway, so it's kind of just this back and forth. She's trying to escape to get back to her own people. Again, her sons are warriors. She's expecting them to rescue her. Um, her husband, I believe, she is assuming dead. And just her and her child are just learning to just learning to deal with life. Life is, she doesn't know it. And it's told from the, from the cousin's perspective and from Cynthia's Anne perspective and Cynthia Anne kind of just trying to, I don't understand why people do it this way. I've done it this way and this way works for me. Um, this is where I'm comfortable. Why are they trying to change me? And just kind of a lot of that back and forth. Um, it, it is a heart-wrenching book. It is very heart-wrenching. I don't expect um, this to be otherwise, to be honest. Um, it doesn't have the best outcome, if you know the story of Cynthia Ann. It is a very sad outcome. Um, but it was... I I really enjoyed it. It was very moving. And it, and it stayed with me, because I read this a while ago, and it has still stayed with me. I do not own this book. We thought we did, but we listened to it on Audible. Well, I mostly did. And that is a rumored... Actually, I'll just do it this way. That is a rumored fortune. And the, the best way I could describe this book, I came up with it on our way on one of the trips. I'm like, hey, quick, write this down. Okay, take The Wit of Jane Austen, The Depth of Elizabeth Gaskell, and the intrigue of Charles Dickens, and you pretty much have a rumored fortune. Um, it is really well written. It is very well narrated if you want to listen to the audiobook, which I believe we listen to on Hoopla or Libby. Um, Libby is our local library. That's the one that they use. I hack into my sister's uh, library card back in California in order to get Hoopla. So it just depends on what your library system has. Some library systems have both. So that, that would work too, um, but I think I thought the narrator did really well. This story, um, oh, this one has like these notes from a viticulturist, I said that word so many times and now I can't say it, from a viticulturist, which is basically a grape vine cultivator, and there's these beautiful like uh, quotes taken from that book. I literally reached out to the author and said, where did you find this book? I really want this book. I want to read it. It's amazing. And she's like, I just made it up. Like she made up the, even the notes from a viticulturist that works along with the story of Rumored Fortune. And I'm like, well, you need to write that book because that is, you know, there's <clears throat> not only reflections on a vineyard life, but there's actual knowledge or facts about how to have this vineyard and I, I I'm very intrigued in this now I want to read this book so please write it and I told her I was like I was really looking forward to using those quotes as copy work in my homeschool and she's like oh you homeschool too so there was kind of this back and forthness of it so uh Joanna Davidson Paul Palatino Palatino her 
she wrote this book it was really good it is about a young woman basically trying to um, make this vineyard survive after the death of her father and this other guy coming in that is very much a John Thornton from um, North and South just very adamant very this is the way it needs to be you this is how it is and she's just like where's your compassion man where is your understanding um and he's very quiet so Darcy mixed with John Thornton meshing you kind of have this our main character and so he's kind of in she's kind of in they're at odds she's supp the supposed heiress with this rumored fortune and she's trying to find where her father hid this fortune in order to save the vineyard, in order to kind of keep a lifestyle going that she wants for the sake of her mother, who is very much a, I did not marry for love, I married for money, where is this money? Around here just to know. Come, come in the background. Okay, we have a little bit different setup because we get interrupted. Oh, we got interrupted. Okay, so rumored fortune, I loved it. Moving on. Um, okay. So. This one, Spies of Chilling Lane by Jennifer Ryan. I really enjoyed Kitchen Front by this author. <laughs> Sorry. I really enjoyed Kitchen Front by this author. And I wanted to read more of her books. I've heard, um, I, I haven't really heard anything good about the Ladies Tilbury Choir. I did do this one because they have the audio of it. And so it's like, oh, this will be really good. We had some um, house cleaning to do. And so this really kind of helped me during that time of cleaning houses all day. Anyway, this this story was really fun because it's it starts out with a character that's not likable. Actually she the the main there's two main characters here. There is the mother that reminds me so much of Miss Julia from Miss Julia Speaks Her Mind and it's not a likable character. But the difference between this book and Miss Julia Speaks Her Mind is that you have the slow transformation. Braithwaite um, kind of realizes that she's not been an amazing person and kind of works to better herself. So I, I, I appreciated that. Um, whereas I feel like Miss Julia kind of ends up being take me as I am. Um, and then our Betty, her daughter, is one of those, she was just not really loved as a kid. And so she kind of leaves her parents and goes off to try to make something of herself. Then our, So those are kind of like ideas throughout the book. The story opens up with Mrs. Braithwaite kind of being ousted by her town because uh, her husband left her and the stigma of that it's so she's going to London to try to find her daughter basically to tell her something that she needs to know before it comes out and she has to learn the hard way so it's kind of pretty obvious what that is right when she gets there her daughter has disappeared and basically nobody knows where her daughter is who her daughter is even to yeah even to a certain extent who her daughter is and it's just yeah, it's kind of like this, we're, I'm out to find her, and it turns out her daughter is a spy for the um, British Army. And through that of trying to figure out where her daughter ends up, Mrs. Braithwaite kind of just takes matters into her own hands. There is a Mr. Norris in here who basically runs the boarding house that these women stay in, that you kind of are trying to figure out if they're all under disguise or is it just Betty, but in my mind I had Michael Kitchener playing Mr. Norris. He just has that sweetness about him, but he also has like this temperament that isn't um, foil from Foil's War, but M Michael Kitchener, just the kindness about him really fit our character, Mr. Norris. So in my mind, that is how I picture him. And, 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 and if you've seen Michael Kitchener in videos, you, you might kind of understand what I mean by that. So Mr. Norris and Mrs. Braithwaite are pretty much like out to try to figure out is the Communist Party behind this? Is the Nazi Party behind this? Is the, you know who is basically um, taking Betty and where is she and what has happened to her? So it was a lot of fun. I really did enjoy it. Um, this one, um, 
you know, when you feel, when you finish a mystery, it kind of just wraps up and the mystery is solved and everything is there. But what I appreciated about this book is that it, it more like just faded away. So the mystery was done, but you still had characters and their stories and they just kind of like finished. It was, it was really nice. I appreciated that. Um, I, I really enjoyed this one. I really did. Um, it's one that I would, I would easily read again. I need to get on to the book, so we have a lot to talk about. So the next two I'm going to be talking about are part of the True Crime um, series. This one, The Blue Coke by Shannon McNear. Um, this one is about um, a, a woman who is watching basically her best friend, and she's trying to figure out, is her best friend... Why did she change so much after she got married? And why are there other women in this picture wearing the gift that she gave her best friend, which is the blue Coke? And it is what I what I like, what I admire that the author did about this book is that there is almost no information about this true crime, which is about these two brothers, I believe. I believe, yeah, two brothers that basically declare war on humanity. And I think it's like the first serial killers um, in America. I think they were considered the first serial killers. But this takes place in like 1797. So, you know, America, it's not that it was the first North America serial killer, but I believe it was the first considered true American serial killers. Um, it's very gruesome. It's, it's kind of hard to read at times, I'll be honest, it was, it was dark. But uh, kudos to the author because I think like Jamie Jo Wright, she's climbing up there with kind of telling stuff like it is and sometimes it's dark and gruesome, but she's not dragging you through it, which I appreciate because there is some, some really nasty stuff that was done here and you're just like, ew, but you're not like bolt, bolt, shower, you know, I can't can't undo that. So Jamie Jo Wright kind of manages to get to that line but doesn't cross over. Um, I think Shannon McNear kind of does that too where she gets you to that line but she's not going to cross over. I'm trying to think of something that I could compare to that I was just like man you you went too far man. But I, I nothing comes to the top of my mind in that. Um, I think one of the strong points in this book is that the author really showed very well, very well, what it's like to be in an abusive situation. And they weren't necessarily in an abusive situation. They were more like in a cult situation. But emotionally abusive. Oh, I do need to point out. There is, there is some triggers in here. There's some really, really bad things in here that if you couldn't handle it, I would want somebody to be aware of it. And I'll get to that in a minute. But um, the abuse, kind of showing what it's like to be in an abusive situation of feeling like you can't get out. And you get that hope of being able to get out. But then getting to a point where you're kind of stuck on going back and then thinking you'll never get out. Forgetting the fact that you made it to the next point before having to go back. I thought that was done really, really well as somebody that has kind of helped somebody through an abusive situation. I just was like, wow, I, this feels very familiar. Somebody looking outside in um, of just trying to get them to see, look, just, just leave, just get out, just go. And them feeling really stuck at where they are. I do want to say there is a point where, uh, how, do, how do I share this without spoiling it? There is, there is um, one of the murders, I'm going to call it like it is, it's a murder that happens in here that is really hard, really hard to even imagine what the mother has to go through. So I think I can share that without ruining or spoiling a plot, but it's, it's really hard. So anyway, um, I gave this 4.5 stars. Even though I think the thing that I really didn't like about it was the lack of spiritual depth. So, and that's interesting because I have another one by this author that I read and it's about the Lost Colony of Roanoke. And a lot of the things that I liked about that book 
um, she kind of brings in here. So I think this is definitely going to be an author that I, I would like to read more from. So this is Eleanor, and she just released the second one on this. And then this is her true crime or true colors. So I'm very curious to know where she goes on with that. The next one I read was the purple nightgown in the true colors. This is by A.D. Lawrence. Um, I gave this one five stars. <clears throat> wow, the medical manipulation in this book was on par. It was amazing. Um, this one makes you want to eat like a big juicy steak and maybe the biggest cheesecake you can find after reading it. Um, this is about a woman that pretty much abused her knowledge. I'm not even, I don't even want to call it that, but basically abused her influence and convinced many people basically to starve themselves in order to heal whatever ailment they were dealing with. Um, I've seen a lot of abuse happen with natural medicine, a lot, and I think how this person wrote it in such a way that was convincing, it basically works not only with like natural medicine, but the psychology going behind it, getting to the emotions of these people just wanting relief was written really well, and it's just kind of a lot wrapped up into the story. The the thing that, even though I gave it five stars, um, that I found a little frustrating is that sometimes it felt like it moved way too fast and then sometimes it felt like it was, like the author was, oh, I need to explain some things. Um, so maybe that's something that I kind of reflecting on, figuring that out a little bit later. But I have to say, like, I'm re I really enjoyed that. And I really enjoy the two more down, 500 more of the true colors to go. One kind of is a lot of Christy vibes, if you will. Um, the Heart of the Mountains, you have a English woman escaping a marriage she doesn't want from England or Aunt England. And she comes to the Appalachia Mountains in order to um, live with her brother, become a doctor and whatnot. And outside for her, this very um, weak woman moment at the beginning, she kind of picks up her spine, pulls up her bootstraps, and goes forward. And I give this five stars, mm -hmm. which is really hard for me to do if Christian fiction I hold to a very high standard, a very high standard, and um, I like to make sure that they're meeting that standard. I mean, if it's Christian fiction you want it to be solidly backed up, which is why I didn't like Paper Hearts. Um, you want the content to be enjoyable, not just an, another romance read, Paper Hearts. And you want there to be a good message within there, not just fluff. And Pepper Masham, I think, did that really well. She has her fluff in here. She is kind of known for her very passionate kisses, which I'll be honest, I just skimmed through it because that is not my forte. Yeah. And there's a lot, there's a lot in this book where you're trying to figure out just what kind of character you're reading when you, when, when we're talking about Jeb McAdams, who is our main, um, hero, protagonist hero, and you're trying to figure out just who he is as a character, like, is he just a quiet boy? a quiet man or is the quiet man a reflection of all of the post-world war one trauma he's going through you know there's there's kind of a little bit of that um because in contrast to him his father is a drunk and is not a nice man and there is a lot of there's a lot of controversy even with cora about is the should the mom be even staying with her children with this man and there's some really good comfort or there's a really good scene where Jeb McAdams mother kind of talks to Cora about what it's like being committed to the Lord committed to her husband even in the valley of the shadow of death if you will and being in this relationship 
even what it looks like with her children. And when she gets to a point where she's like, it's not safe, we need to get out of here, she, she takes it. And as I am not in that position of where my kids are in danger because of my husband's depression or anything, thank goodness. But there is that stigma that everybody classifies us into that role or into that, re into that scenario because it happens with one person, the ergo, everybody has to deal with this. And that's not the case. And that conversation she has is just so on par. It's so excellent. I just was like a round of applause to Pepper Basham for really writing that well. And um, that's probably why I ended up giving it five stars. Because that scene alone, I was just like, somebody has represented me and how I feel about this situation so adequately. And so, um, yeah. I, I did enjoy this as a, I didn't expect to. I really did not expect to enjoy that book. I kind of thought it was going to be a pure Jeanette Oak type of fluff. Now, Jeanette Oak can write some really good con or yeah content in her books, but they're kind of more of a chocolate after dinner type of thing, whereas this could have been a main course meal, if that makes sense. Okay, so... I have two more books. These kind of don't fit the fiction aspect of this, but this does fit my Sodbuster side of this, which is another channel I have, and I kind of show more of our life day-to-day -day over there. Um, and so I have two books that I'm just going to review because I, I did go through them and, and whatnot. One is the Homestead Handbook. This is, in my opinion, more of like a... A reference book this really isn't it, it's a handbook it really isn't depth it's kind of more like an encyclopedia where you get a little bit of information and then it kind of goes on from there so you want a homestead you will need some chickens here are some things to look at for chickens you want a can here's some basicness of canning you want a dog here's how to build a dog house but it's not really, it's all basic, basic information. It's not, it's, it's not, it's just not in depth. And so maybe this works well for more beginners kind of looking at what to do. Um, I mean, there are recipes for canning in here, but as a whole, I just don't see, there's just, it's so limited. It's very, very limited on what... What you're getting milking sheep you have this short section for milking sheep diseases what what do we feed breeds of sheep you have short description on breeds of sheep you don't they don't really talk about maybe the Cotswold sheep this brief breed is very docile and hardy and thrives well in pastures produces about 14 pounds of fleece per year making it very profitable breed for anybody wanting to sell wool great I need more so this then you take it on and go and figure out something else so I don't know it's not probably not one I'm gonna keep um, I think my Carla Emery book gave me a little bit more help like here's it's just again I, I see it more as a reference book a jumping point so I need this to gen jump into something that's just a little bit more in depth. I don't know. Somebody sent me the Backwoods magazine, which I have seen a lot of advertisement on Facebook for, like every time I go around. Um, and I don't normally read magazines, maybe why this is making an impression on me. Um, this was interesting insofar as um, kind of what articles have been sent in. Um, it was, I, I found it really, really an enjoyable read. I kind of read it at the lake one day. The kids were all in the lake. I just sat and read this. So there's, you gotta be careful what I share with that. But there's just different, you know, people submitting different articles that they think would work with a more self-sufficient um, lifestyle and, um, homestead living so that was a, an enjoyable read and um I look forward to reading more okay I don't know how we're going to edit this video and all of 
the information in, but it's going to be a long one. So, Wait, I thought you had all right, that's going to be it for this video. But until next time, have another cup of coffee or tea and, and read, read another, another chapter. chapter. And read another chapter. <laughs>